In this video, we answer your mailbag questions. We look at a bunch of new gear that we're testing out currently. I give you my take on Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet. And I share with you what my family and I are currently watching on streaming services as well as DVD and Blu-ray. Welcome to another episode of the Gideon's Tactical Show. Well, welcome back to the show, folks. Bringing it back inside the last few weeks. You know, we've been answering um, some more topical, giving you behind the scenes stuff of what's going on here at the channel. Been doing some outdoor stuff in the Guineas Tactical Show, but really bringing it back home uh, and doing the bread and butter. I'm going to go through a bunch of different stuff today, so I'm really excited for that. And we're going to jump just right into it with some news. Got some new battery news and the future of batteries in general. I'm talking about all batteries uh, for your flashlights, for your phones, for your cameras, for vehicles, all of it. And I got this off of G Digital Trends. Uh, I saw this while I was scrolling through um, well, a news you know, site and I thought it would be interesting to share with you. The 94 year old lithium ion battery inventor unveils new ultra effective glass or sorry, efficient glass battery. So the guy that initially came up with the lithium ion now has a new type of battery. His name is John B. Good Enough. Man, is that awesome. Literally spelled good enough. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great last name. He is a professor um, at an engineering school at the, uh, at the University of Texas, Austin. Uh, pioneered the lithium ion battery technology that is now the industry standard. He is now with a bunch of other researchers and stuff, um, and fellow researcher uh, Maya H. Braga, I believe is how you pronounce that, sorry, um, is the lead on a team of researchers who have developed a low cost, all solid state battery that is safer and more efficient than existing lithium ion technology. So super exciting. This new battery uses uh, sodium or lithium coated glass uh, electrolyte uh, that has a triple, that has triple the storage capacity of a lithium ion battery. So three times the amount of storage capacity. It also charges in minutes instead of hours and operates in both frigid and hot weather from negative 20 to 60 degrees uh, centigrade. So uh, got a lot of capability right there. Early tests suggest the battery is capable of at least 1,200 ch charge discharge cycles. Um, sufficiency, uh, more charge cycles, significantly more charge cycles than um, any compatible and comparable uh, lithium ion batteries. So super excited about that. They're still in testing phases and all that, but it looks like soon um, it will begin to affect all types of technology and give us a lot longer battery life, be able to give us um, better battery life in certain conditions. For me as an outdoorsman, that's super huge, particularly for like cameras and you know flashlights and stuff. So really exciting uh, news coming out in the battery field. And for if you're like me, a lot of us, we use stuff that requires lithium style ion batteries and now they're coming out with something hopefully in the next few years that should blow that out of the water they said it will really revolutionize um, rechargeable cars you know and, ba and battery powered cars so th this is what I just love about technology any when, anytime we try and look at current technology and estimate how it'll affect the future it's it's silly because technology is always changing innovation is always growing and if we try to use today's um, abilities, uh, technology, sustainability, and try and guess how it'll affect 100 years from now. In five, 10 years, battery power could be totally different. In five, 10 years, nuclear power, any, any you name it, something could completely change. If I was to go back to 1919, uh, 19, right after the First World War, and show them a cell phone and what it could do, it would be like supernatural to them. They'd think it was magic and like blow their minds. So, um, and that was only 100 years ago, folks. So it's just cool to see the trends, the new stuff, and I can't wait to see what this new type of battery uh, produces for us in the coming years. All right, now for some fun stuff. You guys asking questions, me doing my best to answer them as quick and easily as possible. If you want to get involved in the mailbag, I usually answer them here on the Gideon's Tactical Show on Saturdays in the comments below of any video. Just put hashtag mailbag and I can usually search them every you know couple weeks. We try to do a mailbag and answer your guys' questions. And I love the, the ideas you send in, the questions, the concepts. It really helps me out. And I think it's a cool way for us just to interact together. It's a, it's a good time and I really enjoy it. So I'm just going to pick out a few here at random. The first one is from the 
uh, underscore OG underscore MP says, I know you use the iPhone and iPad, but is it because you don't like Android or is it just that you have always used it? Well, uh, I originally had a Blackberry with my job. This is way back. Uh, and then we were transitioning and I had a choice. I could either at that time go with the Android or go with Apple. And I had like a, my tablet at the time was an Amazon Fire. So that's all I had. And I really asked a lot of people that I worked with on both sides what they liked about their particular Android or Apple, what they didn't. And at the end of the day, I decided to go with uh, the Apple just because I felt like there was more... Um, just simplicity and not as much uh, like security issues and things like that. And this is again, probably, man, eight years ago. Uh, I think I had an iPhone 3 originally. It was the first one I ever bought. Uh, and I, I loved it. I, I, it connected with me. It was very intuitive, very easy for me. I later bought an iPad to replace the Amazon Fire that I had and have never really looked back. That's what I edit on is um, a mini uh, Mac that I bought like one or two generations ago that so I could upgrade the hard drives. I guess some of the newer ones, you can't upgrade the hard drives. Now with that said, uh, I, you know, I love my Apples and they're very intuitive. The things that have always really frustrated me with Apple is that about after two years, in the last two generations, they seem to really crap out on you. Uh, I've had to replace a battery on, the, on my iPhone 6 that I have. I have an 8 now or 8 plus, I, can't, I think it's an 8 plus. Uh, my six, the battery died after like two years and it was like only charging 16% of the battery. So I had to replace that. That wasn't fun. Uh, the iPad seems to be working a little bit better. And then they, I, I've read things, you know, that they like are purposely putting bugs in the system after a couple years. So it kind of force you to, to upgrade. Um, I, and I've heard back and forth, you know, like, oh, we haven't. Oh, yes, we have. And there's proof and there's not. So, I mean, you know, that's just what I've heard. And I've seen some very bad lag times on certain phones over the years that I've had. Uh, and I, I know that they are in trouble. There is some just lag now in their designing and their ideas that Apple is struggling with compared to everything else on the mar market from Samsung and Android and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I'm just curious what the future will hold. It will be a very hard shift for me if I ever do go away from Apple just because I've been using it for almost a decade now, uh, but that may happen at some point. Uh, let's see here. This one is from JC Shihaman. Shaman, JC Shaman 2 asks, how do you store your knives? Uh, do you do them in a roll, uh, shadow box, lock box? I just have a Tupperware tub. Um, we're pretty low humidity where I live. So I have a couple for all the fixed blades and hatchets and stuff uh, that I store. And then I have some in my room, these little sh plastic shelves, shelving that I carry, you know, that I have maybe my 40 pocket knives because I'm always rotating and buying new and selling and, you know, uh, having the collection that I can just open the drawer. If I'm currently testing one out, boom, pull it out. You know, maybe I come home from the day and now we're going out to dinner and I'm changing my clothes and I can pull out a different one. I'll just have a little drawer system and maybe I'll throw in some photos right now but that's how I store the the um, knives around the house I like this one because I'm actually a huge sci-fi fan I, I think I fell in love with science fiction very first with my dad watching the original uh, like resyndicated um, Star Trek and then uh, watching when it was airing, because I was born in the mid 80s, so I was like five, six years old, in the middle of Star Trek Next Generation. And that's really like my bread and butter. I love Star Trek, uh, and particularly Next Generation. Like it's just retro enough that it's, you know, that it gives you that retro feel. It's got just enough, especially in the later seasons, tech that, you know, you kind of feel a little bit of a connection um, to it. And I, I'll do a whole show, getting a cycle show, talking about Star Trek and Star Wars and differences. And then I got into Star Wars about nine years old. Uh, my buddies bought a VHS when they re-released it on VHS at the time. I had never seen it before. I'd heard about it, but never seen it. Uh, watched the, A New Hope and it just blew my mind. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I love both. I'm not dissing one or the other. They both have their awesome parts and their kind of goofy parts. So, um, but so I love sci-fi. So this question comes from uh, Yoder20 and it says, if you had the opportunity to ever go to the moon or space station, would you go? And what are your thoughts on space, space exploration? Exploration. Man, if I could talk today, tongue tied. I need some water. Okay. Um, if I, what would I, if I had the opportunity? Yeah, short term. I wouldn't want to go up for like a year or anything like that to a space station. I mean, if they were like, yeah, a month, totally, dude, I'll, I'll, I'd do that. 
uh, you know, the moon, same thing, like a month probably, try it out, you know, see how I feel about it. I wouldn't want to spend like, hey, we're gonna go on a six year mission, you wanna go, you know, or something like that. I don't think I would wanna do that. I think the concept of space exploration is awesome. Uh, I love that idea. I think that terraforming would be super cool if we ever get the technology and the ability to do that, to maybe terraform Mars or something with the ice cap that's up there. Um, and I, I do know that short of us somehow discovering light speed, which th theoretically is probably impossible, uh, I know we'll, it'll take eons for us to ever get out of the solar system. So uh, that's just, unless we come up with some sort of technology, to, going back to what I was talking about before, if there's some new way to do something, uh, I don't know how we'll ever really be able to get mankind past like Mars in the next several hundred years on a realistic basis, aside from maybe like sending a man, like person way out there. But that's just my opinion. And again, if we come up with some sort of technology, awesome. Okay, so obviously I haven't pre-read these, so I'm gonna try and remember the, the options off the top of my head. This one's from Darth Kroll. Says, uh, what would you recommend as your top one or two flashlights for camping in the outdoors? Tactical features do not um, really mean anything to me. Don't need that. Uh, this is just for camping and hiking. So probably just literally off the top of my head, if somebody came up to me and asked me that, I would say for a flashlight, if you want to go with like high power rechargeability, it was the um, L LED lenser uh, that we tested out. I think it's the MT100. Uh, that has that 18650 battery. That's great, great rechargeability, focus point. I really like that flashlight a lot. Comes in under 100 bucks, not really tactically thought out. It doesn't need to be. Has a lot of options and a lot of power and capability. So that'd probably be if you're looking for like high power rechargeability, like thousand lumens, big distance, focus points. I think that would probably be the one that I would recommend. Another option um, would be uh, the Yuko Lantern Flashlight Combo. I can't remember that thing off top of the Claris, I think. I'll annotate it in and it'll be in the links below over to Amazon. But uh, that one seems really cool and I have it. I have one, an older version, but three AAA power our batteries and a little like tube thing you put it in you tighten it down boom uh it gives you a good throw it's you know got battery lives and different things like that and then you can pop it open and then it's a lantern and that's like 15 dollars. super great i've used it on many backpacking trips uh and then if you, if you just want more general like triple a double a uh then i know that phoenix has a lot i've used phoenix over the years they have a lot of different models that are out there that don't really have like tactical features that are good that kind of run that way and uh, those, those would be the few that I would look out out of the gate. Okay, uh, man, Yoder20 has got like a bunch of questions in here. Uh, you guys gotta ask questions, otherwise I'm gonna, gonna pick from who I got and I might be redundant with a couple people. So uh, this one is, which do you like better, DC or Marvel? Easy Marvel. Uh, there's just way more. I, I used to really read a lot of comic books growing up as a kid. We would go to the library, you could get like 10 comic books every two weeks and we my brother and I would each get like eight to 10, we'd go home, we'd read them, we'd swap, we'd try and get them as chronological as we could. But I mean, just growing up, really the only super DC superhero that I was really connected with was Batman. I read a lot of Batman. I really didn't read a lot of Superman comic books. Um, I felt like in a way, you know, he's like, he's like Superman, he's like cheating. There's no, aside from Kry Kryptonite, it's like, what are you gonna do to him, right? So it's gotta be Kryptonite, otherwise he's gonna be able to like, fix it every time and nothing can hurt him. Whereas like Batman, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne doesn't have any real superpowers and, you know, is just working off of his wits and the technology that he can come up with and design. So I always liked Batman, but that was about it. I didn't really watch too much. I didn't read too much other than Batman. And, but on the flip side, I mean, growing up, Spider-Man, um, Fantastic Four, uh, let's see. Which I wish they would, they would do a good Fantastic Four movie. I've never seen a good one. I sure hope that they can figure that out at some point. But Fantastic Four, um, Iron Man. So those are the few that we'll uh, answer today. Remember guys, do hashtag mailbag. There, I got a bunch of other ones that I'll try to get to here in another week or two. But add your mailbag questions. If I don't get the questions put in, I can't answer them. There's no mailbag. So I encourage you, if you're thinking about questions, ideas, topics, things like that you want to hear my viewpoint on, put hashtag mailbag in the comments below. Well, all right, all right, all right. Time to talk about uh, some new gear that I'm testing out. We will get to what I'm watching on Netflix and streaming and kind of give you guys some ideas. We're gonna do a quick review as well of um, Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet, so we'll get all that. Just wanna remind you guys and thank you for using all the hyperlinks that we offer to you below over to backcountry.com. 
great stuff over there, particularly now that's getting into hiking and camping and backpacking season. You know, your clothes, tents, um, uh, what's it called? Packs. They got great stuff over there. Backcountry. Don't forget about Blade HQ. <laughs> Gotta love my knives. And uh, Amazon for all the stuff. And a lot of things you're going to see in here, I'll throw in the links below for you guys, particularly if I'm, I'm digging some of this stuff. And finally, Knock Around Sunglass Company. And I do just want to touch on this real quick. I got a limited run from Knock Around of these blue light diffusing um, sunglasses or glasses. And if you don't know anything about these, you know, these were super awesome, you know, knock around. They look kind of like, like safety glasses that with sunglass frames all clear, you know, pretty cool. Uh, they did a limited run of that. I think they should do more of these because I, I, I did, I've heard people starting to talk about blue light diffusing sun, uh, glasses in general and that, you know, you should look into that, particularly if you do a lot of screen time. And I do, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on tablets and computers all day long, oftentimes uh, interfacing with people. And then I'm, you know, here filming with you guys and then I'm editing it a lot of times at night or, you know, I'll be kind of working on planning some stuff out for the next day on my phone while I'm kind of watching something in the background. Probably a lot of you guys do that. And particularly in low light, what would happen a lot of times if I was up kind of late past about 10 o'clock, I would start to get a little blurry eyed and it would start to fatigue my eyes. Sometimes I'd get headaches and it's not good. So uh, I decided to pick up one of these pairs and I, I didn't know if it was a gimmick or not, but it really does work. At first you can't even quite tell, like, is it really doing anything, but it really just tones down the intensity of the light in low light, you know, at night, particularly is when I will bust these out or early morning. Um, you know, if I'm in, in bed for a few minutes, I want to read the news real quick. I'll throw these on. I'll keep them by my bed or late at night. If I'm going to bed, you know, that type of thing, it, it reduces the, the intense blue light and will help your eyes and just, you know, give you a longer, um, life basically. So, uh, knock around sold out of these, maybe at some point they'll release them. So I'll just have them in the links below. Some just to consider, you know, that I looked up a bunch. They're usually about 20 bucks on average for a blue light diffusing pair of glasses. Uh, if you f feel like you have a lot of screen time or like a lot of eye fatigue, or you maybe are concerned that that could happen, I'd encourage you to do it. I am seeing good results. I don't have that blurriness anymore. And I can just tell that I'm not having uh, headaches like I used to at night. Sometimes when I would spend a lot of time focusing on computer light and things like that, it just kind of helps me to diffuse some of that. So it's a, a, a good, I think a good investment, particularly if you're doing a lot of screen time. So I just wanted to share that with you guys in concept. And again, I'll just throw some below. Think about it. Re do your own research. Uh, but I, I didn't know if it was a gimmick for me. It's working. So I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. So uh, this is really exciting. This one is a mag light. Uh, and this is running off of two CR123 batteries. Boom. Going to give us a 320 lumens for four hours. Uh, aluminum body, recessed button that works really re well. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I don't even really know the name of it. It's about 50 bucks USA made. And I'm going to put it up against like the 511 PTP uh, series that we've tested out. I'm going to put it up against my stream lights that we've recently reviewed, like the Polytac series and things like that. Uh, just to see what Maglite is producing for the U.S. market in flashlights. So I'm really looking forward to that. Really exciting. And to see what at a pretty decent price point, what is offered, what are some drawbacks. Now I threw this up the other day, you guys got super pumped about it. The Guardian uh, 4.5 from Bradford Knives. Just wanna show you that there. That's with the, I believe Nimbus coating on there. I love that Nimbus coating. Uh, had the chance a few years ago to have lunch with Brad and his wife, a super cool um, family. And uh, yeah, just really cool to see what they've been doing. You know, we've reviewed Guardians in the past and I will be putting up against the Guardian 4. But I uh, wanted to pick this up just because it's a little bit different, more natural than the Guardian series in general. Now, I actually picked this up on Amazon, and it is, I contacted Brad. He said that they do make them for, I believe it's Blue, uh, Blue Ridge Knives. This is N690 steel. The, uh, the normal one that you'll find on most places, including Amazon, uh, is CPM 3V steel. Now, the only reason I went with the N690 is really for value because I went on Amazon, I paid, I think, like 65 or 70, one, sorry. Sorry, 165 or 170 uh, for that one in the N690. And they do have a couple versions over on Amazon that you can check out and uh, I guess Blue Ridge Knives. Because guys, I just, I, if this was my one done knife and I wasn't a gear reviewer, then I would absolutely have gone with the CPM 3V Steel just because it's an upgrade over N690. Not that N690 is bad, but the, that version is, I believe, 240. 240 versus 175. 
Uh, so I just wanted to save some money that I would invest because uh, I will use it, but I'm not going to use it as my daily hiker just because I'm always gear reviewing, right? I mean, as soon as I review this one, I'll put it away after taking it out several times like we talked about and then you know i'll bust it out from time to time use it on certain side by side stuff you know wait for several months go use it again because again i'm a gear reviewer but uh, that's why i decided to go with that route both would be great options depending on price and you know variations but uh looking forward to giving you the full rundown on that i have got my very first emerson in the collection if you guys follow on instagram you already know a lot of this stuff so you need to be following on instagram and facebook this one is like probably one of the most edcable ones aside from i believe their very first model without the wave that i think that's the a100 or something or 100a uh this guy seems to be one of the most edcable uh you know 200 dollars. we're going to talk about price and value and all that and the interesting grinds that Emerson decides to go with. And is $200 really worth throwing down your hard money for in our Emerson? And what are you buying with an Emerson? So uh, really looking forward to getting that. Th I've been thrashing on it, but I'm gonna really ha hammer on this one more than usual because they are some of the supposedly hardest to use knives around, or you know, they pitch that. Uh, you guys have probably seen this coming in a couple weeks, one or two weeks, the Fastball, Gerber Fastball, super pumped about that. Uh, that Gerber is producing a USA made S3V ball bearing pocket knife for a hundred bucks. We'll talk pros and cons on that. The uh, Kershaw TDI folder, sorry, not Kershaw, my bad. K bar TDI folder. What's good about it? What's not good about it? I'm going to hit all that in that video. And I'm currently working on both. I got both the more ch the cheaper that comes with just the spork version of the new Yuko mess kits, and then I got the higher, more expensive with the switch spork Yuko uh, as well um, mess kit. And I will tell you, I'll kind of give a little let a little bit of the cat out of the bag is that standalone neither one really uh, is a hundred percent. That you have to kind of do combination to get what I'm looking for out of the mess kit. So watch the video to find all the details, what's good, what's not about each design. Each design has positives, each design has drawbacks. And if they had just swapped some features, I think it would have really helped the entire line. Uh, and we'll see if you guys agree or disagree. So looking forward to sharing all that stuff with you guys in the near future. And that's just a few things, folks. I mean, we got lots and lots of stuff coming down the line. These are just a few things I have laying around here that I've been doing video stuff on that I just wanted to share with you. So stay tuned. And if any of these things perk your interest right out of the gate, or uh, you just want to help out and just easy free way to support, use all those hyperlinks that we offer to you below. All right, so we're coming here close to the end. Really excited to do this one with you guys uh, as I break down. And I might do this from time to time, just kind of giving you guys some food for thought. And I want to hear from you, some of your favorite books, as always, kid books, things like that, that we may be looking at, as well as uh, shows and movies that I'm currently watching that I'm getting, you know, I'm just kind of give you guys a review on, stay away from, check it out that type of stuff that I might be watching on the streaming services or have purchased or things like that. So um, I'll just tell you a couple things that both my fa my whole family um, and myself are watching, you know, individually and things like that. So the first one, before we do the final review on uh, Wreck-It Ralph Breaks, Breaks the Internet, but uh, some shows that I'm, the family's watching right now is Grand Tour. Uh, if you have not watched Grand Tour, regardless if you're into cars or not, it's a super entertaining show from the guys of Top Gear. They ran Top Gear for 15 years, I think. Great group of guys, just hilarious. Um, and uh, you know some some of the stuff that they do is a little crass. You know, uh, I don't, you may not want to watch it with your you know grandparents maybe if they're not into that type of thing. Uh, but uh, it, it's so entertaining. It's so funny. Um, you do learn certain things about vehicles. I learned about like the stiffness of rides that short wheelbases, you know, cause you know a lot of uh, bouncy and rough rides, longer wheelbases. You know, I've learned some stuff over the years, but it's just so entertaining. My wife, who's not into cars at all, Mrs. GT, she loves it. You know, so it's a, it's a family affair that we get together every week, and they're producing. They still have a few more episodes. So if you got haven't gotten around to watching uh, this, I believe the third season of Grand Tour, it's on right now. Uh, I believe Amazon Prime also has a lot of the old Top Gears with them on as well. So you can watch those and those are awesome and hilarious and entertaining. They go around the world. They do crazy testing on crazy vehicles you've never seen before. They race cars against fighter jets. I mean, just so much craziness um, and we love it. So that's, that's a family affair right there that we really enjoy. 
One show that my wife and I are kind of watching, and, and this is definitely like for mature audiences. Not, I wouldn't recommend this for people in you know under high school and, and things like that. And uh, I would, I encourage you to read up. And I always, before I watch a show, uh, do the like parental stuff to see what it has. Is it something that I'm willing to watch and and you know deal with and all that. So uh, for me, I'm watching, and my wife and I, we're watching Rebellion right now. It's a it's a historical kind of, doc, not documentary, but it's a, a, a historical uh, based show about the Irish Revolution during the First World War in like 1916. It's very interesting. It is violent. Um, they use adult language. You know, there are some sexual situations. Um, no nudity that I remember because I don't usually watch stuff with that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely you know for mature audiences for sure. But it's about a, a portion of history and based off of se segments of this situation where the the Irish basically tried to uprise and use the 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 British government's focus on the First World War and sending men to Germany as a way to try and gain their independence and just all the ins and outs of that. So far, it's been pretty interesting and I've learned something about history and I love history that I did not even know about. So it's been pretty cool just to, to watch that and something, you know, there's a lot of female characters and how they interact with the male characters and these uprisings and some of these women are helping with it. And they're based off of true characters from what I understand. I don't know characters, but it's true people, you know, people that lived. So it's a very interesting um, drama about that, uh, but uh, it's not for the faint of heart and definitely you know for more adult uh, audiences. Uh, this one is super fun, super excited about this. So I bought this for my son, and this is why I said DVD earlier. I could only find on DVD all four seasons, 98 episodes of the original 1980s Transformer show, and I bought the original Transformers movie. And uh, just nostalgic for me, my son is getting into Transformers and action figures and all that type of stuff. So it's been a really fun time starting to watch those with him. Uh, he is also simultaneously on Netflix, I believe, uh, is where it is, watching the first season, I think he's watched it like four times, of Rescue Bots, which is like a kid version of Transformers, where there were like five, four or five robots that Optimus Prime tasked with like staying in this town and just helping them out and stuff. And so they're, you know, fire truck and they're a helicopter and, you know, there's no guns or violence or in that way or anything like that. That, which is really funny, in your head, you know, you have this nostalgic, like, Transformers, it was so amazing, I loved it. I'll be honest, the storytelling in this kid show, which is like for seven and up, but my son, it's totally fine for my son. And I think there was maybe like one kind of scary episode that we just fast forwarded for him. Um, that that is, has better storytelling than these these original Transformers. They, they're really kind of like no real episode builds upon the other, at least in the first couple seasons that we've been watching together. Uh, it's still super nostalgic, but I think my son at this point in time would rather watch uh, his rescue bots than these. Uh, which is kind of sad sometimes. I'm like, hey, what do you want to watch? And he's like, Rescue Bots. I'm like, let's watch one of these first and then we'll watch Rescue Bots. So uh, he still likes it, but it's just funny and uh, super entertaining. And you know, I picked those up on Amazon if you want to check those out uh, and get nostalgic with the original Transformers. Another quick sh uh, show that I just want to share with you uh, is on Amazon, actually. Uh, yeah, it's on Amazon, and then I we have looked up a couple of these on YouTube, you know, when you just stream them onto the TV, are the Richard Scary uh, Mysteries. You know, they're from probably early 90s, but, you know, re really good. Get makes your kids start thinking. And uh, the Richard Scary characters, that's just uh, the author um, and the guy that kind of started it all. And uh, there's a Richard Scary alphabet and Richard Scary counting video that are amazing. They're super good. Those are on YouTube. You can find them so you can play them on your iPad, your phone for your kids. So if your kids are in that age where they're trying to start to learn their ABCs, they're starting to learn numbers, this is fantastic. So GT Jr. is watching it. He really gets a lot out of it. That we can tell that he's uh, he can do his ABCs now, you know, that we were kind of struggling with and having a hard time getting him to do it. Now he like loves to sing it. Uh, he's starting to do better with his counting, and we, I try to play it for him, you know, a couple times a week, and I'm see, I, I am seeing results because he not only is he entertained, but he's learning his ABCs, he's learning his counting through the Richard Scary videos. And then finally, a uh, quick review on uh, Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet. Now, the original Wreck It Ralph was amazing. My family, myself, uh, we really enjoy it. It's got a lot of nostalgia for me as a video gamer growing up. 
uh, in like the 80s and, and uh, um, into the 90s and early 2000s. So, so many cool references. It's uh, The story is really well done. The plot is good. Um, it's entertaining. There's lots of just fun, you know, good values in in the in the original Wreck It Ralph. So I mean, I, I would give out of five stars, I would give the Wreck It Ralph five stars. Absolutely, uh, Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet was good, but I felt like it kind of dragged, and I could tell my son was getting bored. We just streamed it. It's, it's a live on Amazon right now. Uh, I think we rented it. You know, you have to pay or whatever. Um, but it was good. But I would probably give it like a three and a half or a four star. Just because there were major portions where I'm like, okay, this is like slow in the middle, and you're just kind of like, what are you doing? You know, like, okay, come on. Uh, so there were just certain parts to that that's that, and, and it seemed to take a while to kind of get going to where they actually get into the internet. I think it was like 20, 30 minutes in. Um, there are some hilarious parts with uh, the Penelope, I think, yeah, Penelope, the little kid. Um, her getting into talking with a bunch of the Disney princesses that was super hilarious there's a whole scene about that and she's just kind of like ragging on them and they're kind of it's owned by Disney the, the movie but they're kind of making fun of themselves there's some Star Wars interactions because now you know Disney owns Star Wars and just some funny interactions there in kind of the, the mid half of the movie that was that were really good and entertaining but it didn't, didn't just have the original just had this constant you know up every moment is more and more and more and you're just waiting for that end moment and it's really well done it, it seems like this first one takes a while to get going you kind of get into the internet and then there's this lag in the middle and then they finally kind of wrap it up at the end so it's okay uh it would be worth watching i wouldn't go out of my way to go buy it right away i would wait a little while maybe stream it you know or just wait until you can find you know a deal unless your kids went and saw it and they loved it you know then obviously i mean it's a good movie it'll be entertaining for them but the first one is definitely better than the the second uh, Wreck-It Ralph in their series. We'll see if they make a third. So, guys, that's it. That's getting Satical Show. Hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. Hope this has been fun, entertaining. Remember to subscribe if you're not a current subscriber and hit that bell icon so the, the videos show up in your news feed. Don't forget about uh, Instagram, Facebook, a lot of these gear items, you know, you'll see there. I, I post up a lot on that end. And then uh, finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.